Today we're learning how to do helical striping, which is a technique used in circular knitting and when you're working in a one by one stripe that avo completely avoids any form of jog at the beginning of your round. If you've worked in one by one stripes in the round before, you know that when you get to the beginning of the round, which is where I'm at right now, you see my little beginning and around needle there, you're dropping one yarn, picking up the other, and working around again in a stripe. And every time you hit the beginning of the round, you're making that switch. And what happens is right at that point where you have the marker, you can see in your finished fabric a little bit of a jog in your fabric. The stripes don't line up perfectly. They just get offset, just a touch. So this is a cool and very simple technique that will completely obliterate any jog in your work. Um, and it also, if we look at the wrong side, there's no, there's no point where we're carrying yarn up the inside either. So it's completely clean on the inside. There's no jog and there's no yarn being carried up. And that's because we're working helical stripes. So I've got a little diagram here. When we're working, anytime we're working circularly, this is, would be just with one color, we're working in a spiral. So you're working around and around and around. You're never getting to the end of the row and turning around and going back. You're just working in this giant spiral all the way up. If say we're working a sleeve or a hat or a sweater, that's what is actually going on when you're knitting. When you're working a helical stripe, this is exactly what you're doing, but you're managing two colors at once. So you're pretty much working both of those spirals at the same time so that they never have a point where they're jogging or, or switching out, switching back and forth as your active color. They're both active the entire time. So I have my black yarn here, like a normal single color circular knit, and then I've got this little dotted orange line that I've added in here to show you where your second color fits into the mix. So you can see I started already working these. Uh, you can start a helical stripe at any point in your knitting. You see I worked a little bit of solid here at the bottom in the blue. So if you imagine that I had worked a sleeve or a sweater up in the blue and I was going to work this transition, I start working with that contrast color. I can start at any point. So you see I just finished a round of blue as well. The blue is on my needle. And so I'm going to show you how to start adding in your other color, and then how we begin working in the helical. So I just got to my beginning of round, and I'm going to start working that round in the gray. And I'm going to work all the way around. I'm working with magic loop method so that I can use a long circular needle, even though this project is a smaller circumference. This is probably the equivalent of, say, arm warmers or a large sock, and so I'm using a 32 circular using magic loop. And I'm going to show you a little bit later how this works on double pointed needles. So I'm working around my first stripe. If this was the very first gray stripe I was working, I'd be doing this the exact same way. So I start, I, I join the yarn in at the beginning of round, and now I'm working all the way around. Okay, and you see now I'm coming back around, you can see my beginning of the rounds right there in the beginning of the row, in the middle of the row, excuse me. So I've got the gray here from the current row and the blue here from the row before. So now basically what we're going to be doing is having the colors chase each other around each time. You're never going to get to a point where you work all the way, you're working in the gray and you work all the way and touch the gray from the beginning of the previous round. You're never ever going to do that. Your colors are always going to be chasing each other. And how does that work? I'm going to come here with my gray and I'm going to work until I'm three stitches away from my color change. So basically work until you've got only three stitches in your row of your contrast color. Now you can see I've got my gray here, three stitches of the blue. And all I do is drop my gray once I get to that point and slip pearl-wise, those three stitches, in this case I'm slipping my marker too because I'm right at the beginning of the round, and then pick up the blue and start working. So I'm going to do a round in the blue and show you how to transition back to the gray when I 
encounter it. Okay, so here I am again. You can see the beginning of the round there. Here's my, the point that I changed colors. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna continue with my blue until I've got three gray stitches left. So the exact same way I started my last round. Okay, and so I've got the three light gray. I'm gonna drop my blue, slip those three gray stitches again, pick up my gray yarn, and continue working the next round. And that's all there is to it. You're just stopping just before a color change, slipping those three stitches and resuming with the other color. So in this way, we're able to actually have both colors making spirals at the same time, and we never have a jog in the fabric here. Now, a couple of things I wanna point out. You see that our color change point moves by three stitches every time. So when, we, when I started, it was here at the beginning of round, and then it jumped back three stitches, and then I just transitioned again, and you can see that change point jump back three more. So one really important thing to note when you're doing helical stripe is that the position of the beginning of round marker is totally arbitrary. The marker is not necessary for the jogless technique. It's only necessary to remember where it is in your pattern in case you have to start working any shaping at any point or anything like that. Uh, the other thing I wanna say about helical stripes is that they're really well suited for stockinette. It starts to get a little more complicated if you're working in any kind of a pattern that has a vertical repeat. So I would suggest that you keep this technique simple and work it in a stockinette, any kind of circular stockinette projects where you want to have a one by one stripe or you wanna blend colors from one skein to the next. So when would you use this technique? Well, the most obvious reason is when you wanna do a one by one stripe and you're working a project in the round, whether that's a sweater or a hat, you can do this as a design element with two contrasting colors. You can see I'm working with this darker blue and a nice light gray. However, this is also a really, really great way to blend colors. If you're working with a hand, hand dyed, hand painted yarn or a tonally dyed yarn where when you work, go from one skein to the other, you're not gonna have an exact match for color. So that would give you a hard line in your fabric. Work one inch, two inches of helical stripes when you're ending one skein and beginning another, and you're gonna get a soft blend of color rather than a hard line switching between those two. Another thing that a lot of knitters like to do when they're working with a hand dyed yarn or a tonally dyed yarn is just do this technique the entire project. And that way, if you've got two skeins that have a little variation in them, it keeps the work from pooling or it, it, it just smooths out all the transitions of the color. It's a really nice and, and pretty easy technique to employ. Now, I'm gonna show you also how we do this on double pointed needles, uh, which is also super, super easy and super clear. So I'm gonna transition to double pointed and we'll come back and do another round that way. Okay, so I've just moved over to double pointed needles so I can show you how this technique translates if you're a double pointed user, if you're a double pointed needle user rather than um, magic loop as I was using at the beginning of the tutorial. So I'm currently working a gray stripe as you can see. I'll continue working around. Again, the beginning of the round marker is not important. It doesn't have any bearing on when you change colors. Now before, when we were working on the circulars, we were working until three stitches of the opposing color were remaining in the row and then making the switch. Now that we're on double pointed, it's almost even easier to visualize this. We just use the DPNs as our change point. So what I'm going to do is work until I've got three, three of my DPNs in one color. You can see gray, gray, gray. And on the fourth DPN, I've got blue. So the nice thing about working on DPNs is that I don't even need to do any slipping of stitches. Once I get to the, th once I work that third double pointed and there's only one more remaining in the other color, I just turn my work and I pick up my blue yarn again, and I start working right away. 
So instead of having three stitches in between, I'm having an entire DPN's worth of stitches in between. The concept's the exact same, and the results are the exact same. You just skip having to slip anything if you're on the DPN's. So it's really a question of your own needle preferences. I like Magic Loop personally. It's a little less fiddly. There's less needles to worry about, um, but just as easy to do it in DPNs as it is on a circular. And again, just give you a nice visual here of these beautiful one by one stripes that have no jog anywhere to be seen on the inside or the outside and they also have no yarn being carried up the inside. I really like how a one by one stripe looks both on the right side and the wrong side, especially in a yarn like this. It has a little tweedy texture, softens the transitions. Now I wanna show you an application of this uh, technique that would be used when you're working with a hand dyed yarn or a tonally dyed yarn as I am here. I'm using two very different colors in order to demonstrate the technique. So I have a garment here that's worked in a tonally dyed yarn. And you can see, even though this uh, color is, these skeins are all in the same dye lot, they have a slightly different shade to them. So from this section down is the lightest of the three colors. From here down is a sort of medium color. And then from here down is the dark color. And you can see that from the transition to the dark to the medium, you get a little bit of a hard line here. And because these colors were so similar, we decided that that worked for this specific design. But here, you can see there's a, it's harder to find a, a specific line where you transition from light to dark, as you see here. Because here, from about this point to about this point, we worked one by one stripes using the jogless technique, and that softened this transition. So even though we're doing the exact same thing that we're doing here, where you get a really crisp difference between dark light, dark light. This is a great technique to use in, a, in an application like this so that you can soften those transitions anytime you're using a yarn that has tonal variation in the dyeing. And that is how you do one by one helical striping.